Paul and Silas rejoice in jail. Acts 16, 16 through 40. Day after day, a young slave girl followed Paul, Silas, Timothy, and Luke through the streets of Philippi. These men are servants of the Most High God, she shouted. They will show us the way of salvation. Satan was using the girl to confuse the people listening to the missionaries. The people would have thought she was talking about one of their gods, not the one true God. She was hurting the missionary's witness. Paul finally grew tired of the girl's confusing message. In the name of Jesus, Paul commanded the spirit from Satan to come out of her. Immediately, the spirit left the girl and stopped controlling her. This was good news for the slave girl, but bad news for her owners. The evil spirit gave the girl the ability to predict the future. Her owners charged people money to hear the girl predict their futures. Now that the girl was no longer controlled by the spirit, she was worthless to her owners. The slave girl's owners grabbed Paul and Silas and took them to the local magistrates. These Jewish men are making trouble in our city, they complained, and they are teaching things that are against Roman law. Most of the people in the crowd did not like the Jews, so they started shouting against Paul and Silas. The magistrates tore their clothes. They commanded the officer to whip Paul and Silas with rods and throw them in prison. The jailer made sure they could not escape. He put Paul and Silas in the dungeon of the prison, locked their feet between two pieces of wood called stocks, and chained their wrists to the wall. Paul and Silas sat bruised and bleeding in the dark with their clothes half torn off and unable to stand up and stretch. But God was with them. So they began to sing praises to him while the other prisoners listened. At about midnight, there was a strong earthquake in the area. The entire prison shook so much that the doors flew open and every prisoner's chains fell off. Paul and Silas had the opportunity to run away. The jailer woke up and thought all the prisoners had escaped. He knew he would be blamed and punished, so he grabbed his sword to kill himself. Just in time, Paul shouted to the jailer, Stop! Don't hurt yourself! We are all here! The man grabbed a torch and ran into the cell. He was shaking as he knelt before Paul and Silas. He recognized that they had a message he needed to hear. What must I do to be saved? he asked. Paul and Silas simply said, Believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. The jailer put his trust in Jesus and brought his family to hear the gospel. They trusted in Jesus too. The jailer then took Paul and Silas and washed their cuts and bruises. He was a changed man. He cared about the missionary's needs. Later, the jailer and his family were all baptized by Paul and Silas. After the baptism, the jailer took Paul and Silas to his house and fed them before taking them back to the prison. In the morning, a message came from the rulers to let Paul and Silas go. But Paul wanted to show the city they had not done anything to break the Roman laws. Paul sent a message back to the magistrates and told them that he and Silas were Roman citizens. The magistrates had beaten and imprisoned them without a trial. That was against the law. The magistrates could be punished for beating Roman citizens. Paul said he and Silas would not leave until the magistrates came to let them go. The magistrates were afraid. They came to Paul and Silas, let them out of prison, and begged them to leave the city. Paul and Silas visited the church at Philippi before continuing on their journey. The missionaries never complained about being treated unfairly. Instead, they were glad to have the opportunity to serve God. We should be ready and willing to serve God too, even if it means we might suffer for doing so.